Hi everyone and welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and I post four videos a week on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday at 7am. So if you love recipe videos like this one and you want to see more then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and now I'm going to share with you how to make my delicious Herby Seafood Pasta. As I just mentioned today, I want to share with you how to make my delicious Herby Seafood Pasta. Now this recipe is really easy to do. And I have to say in this house, my little family and I, we love seafood and we love herbs as well. And I'm quite lucky I have some growing in the garden at the moment for the summer season. So I thought the other day that I would use them with some seafood to see how they tasted and the results were amazing it made a really delicious dish and i thought that we could have it for dinner this evening and of course while i was making it i thought i'd share the recipe with you so here is how to make my delicious herby seafood pasta grab myself a large pan and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this onto a high heat on my hob and I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the base of the pan. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this pan to heat up. The pan has started to smoke and the oil has started to heat up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my onions to the base of this pan. So I have peeled and chopped one red onion. You can use any type of onion you like. It can be red or white, it doesn't matter. Um, so I peeled, sliced and diced this onion. I didn't do it too well, but it doesn't really matter. It's just us eating it, so I'm not that bothered. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to add this to the base of the pan. And I'm going to fry this until the onion starts to soften. The onion has started to soften, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in two cloves of garlic that I have peeled and sliced. Um, I said two to four in this, so if you like it more garlicky, then please add more garlic to this. But two is enough for us, and I'm also running out of garlic as well, so I'd like to keep some until I go shopping on Wednesday. So yes, I'm just adding two cloves of garlic to this, but you can add four if you've got them. And I'm going to fry the garlic now until this starts to, that starts to go a golden brown colour. So the garlic has started to go a golden brown colour and the pan is getting slightly hot. So I'm just going to turn the heat down slightly. So I'm going to turn it down to a medium heat. And I'll just try and grab a piece of garlic if I can, just to show you. So as you can see, it needs to be that sort of colour. So like golden brown around the edges. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the base of the pan. Like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my corn. Uh, actually, I might add in the red pepper first. So I'm going to add in the red pepper to the base of the pan. The red pepper is a bit more solid than the courgette is. The courgette is softer than the red pepper. So the red pepper will take slightly longer to soften in the pan. So I'm going to add this in next. And I'm going to fry the pepper, not for long, until it sort of heats through a bit and starts to soften. Um, it will, it may take a little while depending on your pepper. Um, I often find that peppers normally take about five minutes before they actually start to get really soft. But I think I'm just going to fry this for about three minutes. I do like crunchy peppers in my food. So if you're not a pepper fan and you don't like them too crunchy, then you can always fry it for longer and it will soften. And you probably won't notice that it's in there, but it does give the food a lovely sweetness pepper. So that's why I like using them in my kitchen. So now I'm going to add in my courgette. So I have peeled and grated one courgette. You can slice this and dice it if you want to. You don't have to peel it. The reason I peel it is because I'm trying to conceal it from a boy who says he doesn't like vegetables. 
So that's why I, my son says he's allergic to vegetables, so that's why I always try and make vegetables very small in his dinner. So yes, I'm going to fry the courgette in with the red pepper. It won't take long to fry it. It's a much softer vegetable than the uh, pepper, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, and I'm just going to continue to fry these ingredients now. So everything is starting to soften beautifully, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my tomatoes. So I have one tin of tomatoes here that I'm just going to add in. And then I'm going to add in uh, a tablespoon of tamari as well. And tamari is a fermented soy sauce, so if you can't get soy sauce and you uh, can't get tamari, then you can use soy sauce. But this one is gluten free, so I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of that into my cooking. And I'm also going to add in some tomato puree as well. So I'm going to add in a couple of tablespoons of tomato puree to the sauce as well, like so. I'm going to mix these ingredients together, oh it smells so nice already. It is yummy in here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my herbs in. So I have some rosemary, which is picked from my garden. It grows all year round rosemary and it's a great one to have in the garden so I'm just going to pull back the leaves and leave the stalks out. So I'm just going to put that into the saucepan. Um, as I said this is a great one to have in the garden, it grows all year round and it makes food super tasty as well I have to say. And then I've also got a very small amount of lemon balm. Um, it did say one handful, which I know isn't a handful. I was hoping that my lemon balm would grow a bit better than that, but it hasn't grown in the garden, so I don't really know what I've done wrong there. So I've got a very small amount of lemon balm, and I haven't been able to grow any other herbs apart from mint, and I did try ore oregano as well, or oregano, and um, that didn't grow too well either, so I am... Unfortunately, I haven't got any of that, and I'm going to use dried thyme because I actually forgot to get some thyme from the supermarket. So I'm just going to use a teaspoon of dried thyme that I bought from my local supermarket. Um, if you can't get fresh herbs, then you can always use dried. I've never seen lemon balm sold dried, but they might sell it, I don't know. Um, rosemary would be sold um, uh, dried, and you could also use basil in this as well. That would make a really nice herby seafood pasta as well. So I'm just gonna mix these ingredients together, like so. And I'm going to just turn the heat up slightly and now I'm going to add in the fish but I need to take the skin from the fish before I do that. I've finished um, removing the skin from the salmon. I have showed how to do this in a previous video and I will link that video in the description box below for you so I won't show you again but it's very simple. You just slide the knife between the... Um, between the flesh and the skin and just inch your way along and then the skin comes off really easily like that. Um, so yeah, I'll put that video in the description box below. But anyway, I've removed the skin and I've cut this into chunks. I'm just going to turn the heat back down on this. I've just turned it up slightly. I'm just going to turn it back down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to my sauce. In the original recipe, I did say that you could add prawns as well if you wanted to. So if you're making this for more people and you want it to be a bit more seafood-like, then you can add prawns. And also, I think you can get bags of seafood now. So I think you can get prawns and salmon in a bag. And the skin on the salmon is already removed. So if you're a bit squeamish or you don't like removing the skin, then you can always get bags of it. And you can also get the fishmonger to remove the skin. If you buy it from a fishmonger, they will remove the skin as well. So I'm just going to let this 
sit in the sauce. Just going to let the salmon sit in the sauce and cook away. And when it's all pink, I shall add in the pasta. As you can see, the sauce looks a little bit less. I have removed some of the sauce for my lunch tomorrow. The salmon has cooked and I can tell because it's flaking away from itself and it's all a lovely pink colour as it flakes away. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the pasta to the sauce. So as I said, I'm having some of this for lunch tomorrow. So I've made enough for Howard, Ted and myself in pasta. So I'm just going to add the pasta in like so. And I'm going to add the pasta to the sauce and not the other way round. I think I'm also going to add a sprinkling of salt as well because I forgot to do this earlier and a little bit of pepper as well so not too much but just a little bit is fine I'm serving this to my son who's eight and he's not a great pepper fan but he's okay on a little bit so I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper to it as well and that my friends is our Herby seafood pasta done. So I'm just going to check this for seasoning and then I'm going to turn the heat off now and I'm going to check this for seasoning and then I'm just going to serve it. So, mmm, oh, that's really nice. That's delicious. Mmm. Yep, seasoning is perfect. That's how you make my delicious herby seafood pasta and that recipe I will link in the description box below for you. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be having this for my dinner this evening and it smelled and tasted so good, I can't wait. So for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave any comments below. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you all soon.